Good morning, Five Acre students. So uh, once again, you guys have absolutely blown me away with all of the lovely dishes and the photographs that you've been sending me. It's really great that you've been cooking and I'm really looking forward to getting you back in the kitchen at school, uh, whenever that might be, because I do believe you're going to be cracking little chefs. So today we're actually going to make uh, cauliflower cheese. I did explain on the recipe that you could turn this into a mac and cheese as well. Um, but I will talk you through that as we go along, but I am going to make the cauliflower cheese today. So I thought, first of all, what we'd do is we'd do a little equipment check and also an ingredients check. So in terms of equipment, you're going to need an oven proof dish. So this is a dish that you can cook something in the oven in. If you haven't got one, you can actually cook it in a pan if you want, um, but make sure it doesn't have any plastic handles and things like that. It might just stick around the edges a little bit, so you need to give it a good soak. So the other thing you're going to need is um, a large knife, okay, to cut your cauliflower with, and also a tablespoon and if you watched my video last week we went through what a teaspoon is, what a dessert spoon is, what a tablespoon is. When we're measuring things with spoons we actually need it level not piled up so around about four tablespoons of flour is about 50 grams so if you haven't got any tablespoons but you do have weighing scales you can use that as a base okay. Right so I'm going to move the camera down and I'll pass the ingredients over the board so you can see what I've actually got. So bear with me. Okay, so you should be able to see the board there. All right, so first of all, obviously I've got a cauliflower and when we take it over to the kitchen, we're gonna take these outer leaves off, okay? This dish is great. If you've got a cauliflower in your fridge and it's going a little bit soft and you think, oh, I don't really want to just serve it up just as cauliflower, this is fantastic because obviously we're gonna soften the cauliflower in the cheese sauce and if you've got any little blemishes on your cauliflower, you can just cut those off, okay? For the sauce, first of all, you're gonna need some butter, okay? And we're gonna melt this in the pan and we're going to mix it with our flour, okay? I've got these covered because I've had the doors open and I've got a fly in here, so I don't want them lay, uh, laying sort of on the, on the ingredients. Then what you're going to need is you're going to need some milk and it's 500 millilitres of milk. Now there's 568 millilitres in a pint. So again, if you don't have any measuring jugs, you want to just put sort of up to about here on the pint. OK, and this can be full fat, skimmed or semi skimmed. You can actually make this with almond milk um, if you're dairy free as well. Obviously, you wouldn't put the cheese in. You'd just do a white sauce or get some uh, vegetarian cheese to go in there, which obviously doesn't have any dairy in. Sorry, vegan cheese, which doesn't have any dairy in. So we've done our milk, butter and flour. And the next thing you're going to need, obviously, is your cheese. And I've got grated cheddar here just to put in my dish. And I've also got some grated parmesan, which is optional to go on the top. Now, you will also need some mustard. And I've said Dijon mustard, which um, is not, it doesn't have to be Dijon mustard. You can just use English mustard. If you don't like that mustardy taste, then just leave it out. Probably you're going to need to put some salt and pepper in. I like to pop that on the top and I mix it generally with my breadcrumbs. Now, again, breadcrumbs are optional, so you don't need to put those in. What I've actually done is I've just put in my Nutribullet some stale bread that I made. So I'm a bit of a fan of sourdough. So I've got sourdough breadcrumbs here and I've also got anchovies. Now I'll take this off to show you. Some of you might not have had tried anchovies before. And what they are is they're little fish fillets and they're really salty, but when you use them in cooking, they don't taste fishy at all. They just taste a nice sort of savory, salty tang. And they come in a number of ways. You can buy them fresh, uh, which will just be an olive oil. You can buy them in a um, bottle like this, or you can buy them in a can, okay? So they're all as good as each other. It doesn't matter which one you use. So that's all of our ingredients. So I'm gonna take you over to uh, the kitchen now and we'll set up there. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're set up in the kitchen now. You are gonna need a few more ingredients. I just didn't have space for them on the table. So I'll run through those first. 
But again, when you're cooking in the kitchen, especially when you're using knives and the hobs and anything hot, please, please have an adult with you. Don't just do this without asking. Just make sure that everything's OK and that you are safe at home when you're cooking. Right. So whilst you're at the cooker, you need to turn the cooker on to 180 degrees. OK. Um, again, if you're using an arga, you can just use it in the uh, roasting oven. So uh, my friend says that that works really well with the cauliflower cheese. So I'm going to move the camera down and you can have a little look at what I've got here prepped. OK, so first of all, along with your oven proof dish, what you're going to need is a pan. And this is the kind of one that you could actually put in the oven to uh, cook in or this one here if you haven't got an oven proof dish. So this one though is for the hob, so I'm going to make my sauce in this one. And this one here, I'm going to just boil my cauliflower a little bit in it, just to start the softening process so it isn't too hard uh, when it comes out of the cooker. Okay, so first things first, I'm not going to put the water to boil yet for the cauliflower here, because I'm going to get my cauliflower in first and I'm not dropping it into hot water. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start chopping my cauliflower and um, we'll pop it in the pan, get it on to boil, and then what we'll do is we'll start the sauce. So if I move the camera to my board, you should be able to see what I'm doing now. Okay, and first thing we're gonna do is remove these outer stalks, and they just simply pull off, okay? So just pull those off. You can actually eat them, they wouldn't do you any harm but I'm not a fan. Okay, so what you'll have then is like the stalk part of the cauliflower here, and you need to remove those. I'll just pop these in the bin. It's always good to clear up as you go along. Okay, so with your knife, first of all, I'm going to cut this stalk off. So I don't know if you can see, I'm actually doing it the other way. I'm just cutting through that stalk okay and then what you need to do is remove any other leaves that are here with your fingers and again pop those in the bin and then what we're going to do is start cutting the florets out okay so these bits here are the florets Okay, and what you would be able to do with your knife, you can use a small knife for this if you want, is just to cut down and loosen that floret off. Now, this is quite a large chunk of cauliflower. If you want it chunky, then that's fine. You just need to cook it for a little bit longer in the boiling water. But I'm just going to cut mine in half. Okay, now be very careful. You notice that I did made that claw hold again and kept my hand out of the way, cut down, okay, on the cauliflower. So just be safe. And then I'm going to take another floret off, again making sure my fingers are out of the way, and cut that in half again. Okay, and you keep going until you've got enough cauliflower for your dish. Now then, I've got my dish prepared here, so I'm moving my camera around. And there we go. And I've put some cauliflower, because I had half of another cauliflower that I needed to use up, into the dish. And I'm going to mix in the new cauliflower. And this is a really good way to test to see whether you've got enough cauliflower in your dish. You don't want to overfill it and you don't want to have too little. Okay, so I'll fill this up a little bit just to show you what it would be like. I'm probably not going to need all of this cauliflower. Okay, move those to the side. Right, so I've got some cauliflower left that I'm going to pop back in the fridge. Wrap that in a bit of cling film and it will last quite a long time in the fridge. And I've got my dish here. So you can see it's not piled up. It's just covering the bottom nicely, nice and evenly. Now this here will probably serve three to four as a side dish. Or if you wanted to use it as a main with a green salad, it would probably serve two people. So if you're only cooking a side for two people... What you'd need to do is obviously half all of the ingredients and use a smaller dish. Okay, so we've got our cauliflower now. So in our big pan, let me bring you up to the cooker again. So in our big pan, I'm going to put some boiling water. Okay, 
So I'll take that pan over to the sink and I'm just going to sort of half fill it. Okay, so my pan's quite large, so I've just got it up to this line here. It doesn't need to be too high. And because it's got a large surface area on the bottom, it will come to the boil quicker. If you were using a small pan with lots of water in it or a tall pan, then it's going to take longer to boil because you haven't got as much of the surface of the pan on the heat. I'm going to pop in my cauliflower. The water's cold, so there's no danger there to my fingers. Pop that in. Okay, any little bits in your dish like this you can just leave because they will cook in the time that it's going to be in the oven. So I move that out of the way. I'm going to clear my board up a little bit again. Okay, in fact I'll move that out of the way because I'm not going to need it again. And get these bits in the bin. Move my board out of the way. Okay, and also my knife. Little tidy down. Okay. And um, this is where we're going to actually need now to turn the cooker on. So you're going to need to turn your hob on. And to bring something to the boil, you need to have that hob on full heat. So turn that dial all the way up to the top. Okay. And you'll get that coming to the boil in probably about five minutes. Now you also need your cooker on. So pop your cooker on, as I say, about 180 degrees to 200, just depends on your cooker. Ask your mum or your carer or your auntie, whoever you're in lockdown with, whether she would cook a cauliflower cheese or uh, warm something up in the oven to cook, like a lasagna, at either 180 or 200. Some cookers come to temperature really well. If you've got an older cooker, you might need to just notch it up a little bit. So I've got mine here just above 180. Okay. So I've got my cauliflower on, you can see my hob is now nice and red, so that's actually going to be heating that water up. Once that water comes to the boil, you need to turn it down to number three, because if you keep it boiling, you may sort of have water splashing over the side or just spitting up at you. So you just keep yourself safe at all times. If you've got a lid to put on your pan, you can put a lid on and that will keep the heat in. Um, I'll bring my camera down again. Okay, I like to just leave it off slightly, ever so slightly, to let the steam out, and that stops the lid, the pan lid, banging against the pan here with the, the pressure. So we're now going to make the sauce. So the other item you're going to need is either a wooden spoon or a wooden spatula. Because we're using a metal pan, I always say never ever stir metal on metal, okay, when you're cooking. Right, so I'm going to put this hob on, number three. So I'm using a small pan, so I'm going to use a small hob here. I've got my large pan on the large hob, and then obviously that will get more heat. You need to be really careful you don't burn your sauce. So just a medium heat, this will come up to temperature in a minute. I can feel it coming on a little bit now. Well, I will if I turn it on properly. <laughs> here we go. I've got the rear one on, and I've got the front one on. So rear one on six, front one on three. So I got a new cooker a little while ago, I'm still not quite used to which uh, buttons go to which hob. So I can feel that coming on now. Right, so I'm going to put the butter in to melt that slowly. And what I don't want to do is burn this butter. So do not leave it unattended. You need to just stay with this dish constantly and then make sure things don't burn. So I've chopped the butter up a little bit so there's more on the surface of the pan and I'm just going to let that melt. Once it melts, I'm going to add my flour and then mix it all together. You can turn the heat up to number four if you want, just to melt the butter, but just make sure you don't burn it. So we'll just give this a minute. If your butter's straight out the fridge, obviously it's going to take a little longer. Move it around the base of the pan to get it melted. Okay. Don't 
add your flour until all of your butter is melted. I'm going to bring this camera a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, that's a bit better. Right, get that melted. You've got to be patient with this dish. It doesn't happen quickly, but it really is worth it. So if you're going to make mac and cheese, what you would have done, okay, is you need to bring a pan of water to the boil first. You can't put pasta, dried pasta, in cold water. It just goes sticky because the starch is released slowly and it just all congeals together. So what you would need to do is bring your pan of water to the boil. So we talked about a rolling boil in one of the dishes. I think it was the potato salad dish. So a rolling boil is when your top of the water is rolling around, okay, not just bubbles on the bottom, that's a, that's a gentle simmer. Okay, so bring it to the boil, turn it down to number four or five, okay, dependent on your hob, so that vigorous boil just calms down a little. Put your pasta in a sieve and gently lower your pasta into the water. Don't just throw it in there because that hot water will splash at you. Now, dependent on which pasta you've got will depend on how long it needs to cook. So please, please read your packet. So you'd have your pasta cooking here and then you'd start your sauce. What you might want to do is do your pasta completely and or your cauliflower and then stop. OK, you can rinse your pasta under the sink in cold water to stop it sticking and then come and make your sauce if you don't want to do two things at once. So I've got my butter melted now. I'm going to add my flour. Okay, and I'm going to stir that and it will make a paste. Okay, and you need to incorporate all of that flour into the paste. Now, if your paste is too dry at this point, add a little extra um, butter. So mine's quite dry here. Okay, I would be able to work with this, but it's quite difficult if it's the first time you've done it. So if yours is like this, just add a little bit more butter. I'll just grab some. Okay. So just take your butter and add a little bit more. Okay, cut a slice off there. Need to put this in the butter dish. Okay. Let that melt. Okay, just by putting it over the half of the heat. Okay, and that will just give you a little bit more liquid just to make sure that your roux, that's the flour and water paste, okay, isn't too dry. Now, what we're actually doing here, the skill that I want you to learn is making a roux, that's R-O-U-X. And basically what you're doing is you're creating a thickening agent here to thicken a sauce. So we're cooking out the flour now. And by cooking out this paste, cooking out the flour for a couple of minutes, it will take away the floury taste within the sauce. So if you don't spend time doing this, it will just maybe have a little sort of floury taste that you don't want. So I'm literally just moving this paste around the bottom of the pan. Okay. And we do that for a couple of minutes. So you can see my paste now is a little bit more pliable. It's not as thick. It's a bit easier to work with. Okay. Now, these measurements that I've given you, the ingredients measurements, depend on, on what kind of butter you have, how much water content it has, what kind of flour you're using. They may all differ. So don't panic if you do have a runny sauce here. Okay. Um, when you're doing this part. If you feel you need to add a little bit more flour, do it now. You can't add any more later, okay? Otherwise you will end up with a lumpy sauce. If you think it's too thick, as I showed you, just add a little more butter. Right, so I've cooked that flour out for a, a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn my hob off and I'm going to put my pan, let me move this away to this side, see if I can show you. There we go. I'm going to put my pan on a tea towel. Okay. Now I'm going to add my milk slowly. The reason why I've taken it off the hob is because if you spill this milk over your hob, it's going to burn 
and um, whoever's cookie you're using is not going to be very happy <laughs> okay now the milk I'm going to add a little bit at a time and I'm not going to measure this I'm as I say I'm just going to use up to about so much here and leave the other 68 millilitres or so just in the bottom so I'm going to add a small amount and I'm going to stir that around and around until I've incorporated all of the milk into my paste. I'll do a little bit more. Do not add more milk until you've smoothed out all of the lumps and incorporated all of the milk. Okay. So again, patience is key with this. And the smaller amount of milk you add, the easier it will be. Okay, so we're loosening up this sauce now. And this is where, if I added more milk straight away now, I would have a lumpy sauce. So I tend to like to stir my sauce as if I'm sitting on a waltzer. So I go round and round in little circles as I'm going around the pan. And that tends okay to sort out any of those lumps if you have got lumps press them against the side and just smooth them out a bit more okay and then i also go around the base of the pan like that making sure i've incorporated all of the lumps and you can see now it's actually starting to look like quite a creamy sauce Okay, no lumps. If you've got lumps on your spatula or your spoon, you can just discard those, take them off. Because you don't want them falling into your lovely smooth sauce afterwards. Okay. I like to use this spatula because it's angled so I can get this end here right into the base of the, bo the, uh, the bottom of the pan. Okay, so you'll hear your cauliflower bubbling away as well soon. I can see some steam coming out of my pan. Okay, a little bit more milk. Okay, so now if I hold this up, you can see it's really runny, a little bit like a, a very runny custard. Okay, once you've got to this point and you're absolutely certain you don't have any lumps, you can pour the rest of your milk in. Okay, stir it gently because it will splash. And as I say, I'm going to leave about that much milk in the bottom of my pint. Put a little bit more in. There we go. Okay, give it a good stir. Go up the sides of the pan to make sure nothing is sticking. Okay, and at this point, you're going to put it back onto the heat. So just have a little check to see if you've got any of the milk running down the sides of your pan and give it a little wipe because if it is on the bottom of the pan or on the sides again it will burn onto that pan and you're going to be scrubbing it for quite a while. <laughs> right so I'm going to put my hob on number four again. Move my camera over so you can see what I'm doing. Okay so that goes onto the hob and you need to constantly stir it, okay? If you stop stirring this, what will happen is the sauce will start to cook on the bottom of the pan, and then it will eventually form a crust on the bottom and burn. So by moving it around the pan, you're stopping that from happening. And what we actually want to happen is for the heat to gently heat up the mixture and the starch in the flour will start to absorb the liquid and then it will all become nice and thick and it happens round about 80 to 86 degrees okay so we don't want to leave this to boil all right because otherwise it's just going to burn and spoil now this takes a little while so i'm going to pause the video in a minute okay and you can carry on doing this and I'll join you when my sauce is nice and thick. But just remember, you need to constantly stir this. If you need to do anything, if you need to leave the, the hob, just simply move your pan and turn your hob off and then come back to it. OK, don't just think oh, it'll be OK, because this will burn in a matter of two minutes or so if it's left unattended. Now, the other thing you're going to have to keep an eye on is your cauliflower. Okay, 
So if we have a little look at this now, always shield your face with the pan lid if you're lifting it up. Okay, you can see that the cauliflower is cooking in that water, but it's not quite boiling, so that won't be ready yet. We don't want to cook it until it's completely soft though. We only want to cook it for probably a couple of minutes once it's started to boil, because it will cook in the oven in the sauce and you don't want it too soft. So I'm gonna put my pen lid back on. Okay, I'm going to turn the video off, I'm going to keep stirring this, and I will see you when it's nice and thick. Okay, so my sauce has thickened, I'll show you that in a moment. My cauliflower has been cooking for a little while, so that's softened up. So I'm going to show you how to add the extra ingredients to the sauce, and then how to safely get the cauliflower out of the pan and into your dish. So I'll move the camera again. Okay, I don't know if you can see here. There we go. My sauce is nice and thick now, okay? And to that sauce, I'm going to add my Dijon mustard, but I've turned my hob off as well because I don't want it to continue cooking. So I'm gonna get my Dijon mustard, pop that in, and I'm also going to put my um, cheese in, So, but only my cheddar. I'm gonna leave my Parmesan for the top. So I'm going to sprinkle that in. If you haven't got any Parmesan, you can always put some extra cheddar on the top. Okay, so pop that in. And I'm going to give that a mix and let that cheese melt. Now it will look like your sauce has gone really lumpy now. It hasn't, it's just the cheese that you've mixed in. So if you want to put some salt and pepper in, you can put salt and pepper in this. But as I say, I'm going to pop mine on the top. Okay, you don't have to wait for your cheese to melt because it will melt whilst it's cooking in the oven as well. Okay, so I'll just move that to one side. Now you can see here that I've got my cauliflower and I've also brought back my dish and I've got now a slotted spoon. So very carefully, and I've put my dish on my tea towel to catch any drips, but just be careful you don't set fire to it if it's really close to the hob here. Your hob should be off and just cool down for a minute or two. I turned mine off about five minutes ago. Just take your cauliflower out, pop it in the dish. Don't worry about those raw bits that we've got in there. They're small enough to cook whilst it's cooking in the oven. Okay, so take the cauliflower out. If you have got any stray cauliflower leaves, as I say, it doesn't matter. You can always eat them or you can just pick them out. But be careful because your cauliflower might be hot. Okay. There we go. So make sure it's nice and even in your pan. You should be able to feel that your cauliflower is not soft yet. But what we've done is we've just started that cooking process. Okay. So now this pan gets really hot because of the, the material it's made from. So I'm just gonna use my tea towel to lift it out of the way and pop it in the sink. I don't want any accidents with that hot water. Okay, let's give this a brush down. Right, let's move this camera so you can see what I'm doing again. Okay. Probably about right. Okay, so I've got my cauliflower cheese and I've also got my tea towel that I'm going to put my pan on because the bottom of my pan may still be hot. Okay, this one I can pick up so that's not a problem. So I'm going to pop that on the tea towel there, okay, just so I've got it away from that hob so I'm not going to spill anything on the hob again, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this onto the cauliflower cheese. Now, you can spoon it on if you prefer, okay? It just depends on your pan and how heavy it is, okay? I'm actually able to pour this, but I'm just going to pour it very gently. I'm doing this the wrong way. You can't actually see how I'm doing this. Um, but hopefully, you'll get the idea when I show you in a minute. I'm not, I can't do it the other way around because it would mean doing it left-handed. Okay, you can spoon it over as I say. Okay, get any leftover sauce out of your pan. Okay, and pop it onto your cauliflower. Now it's a good idea to get this pan soaking in some water straight away, because uh, then it's easier to wash. Okay, and just spoon that cauliflower over, making sure, sorry, the sauce over the cauliflower, 
making sure that you're covering it all. Okay, you don't want this cauliflower to be swimming, but you do want a good amount of sauce so it's not dry. Okay. All right, let's move that tea towel out of the way. Okay, so now for your optional extras. First thing I do is I just pop some salt and pepper on it. I'm trying to get my dish so you can see it. There we go. Okay. I'm not a big fan of a lot of salt, but I do like quite a lot of pepper. Okay. Then I'm going to pop my breadcrumbs on the top. So just sprinkle these over. If you don't have breadcrumbs, you can just toast some bread. And then if you have got a mixer, mix it up. If you haven't got a mixer, just sort of toast it and then let it go cold so it goes really crunchy. And then you can just crumble it up. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put my parmesan over the top and then the anchovies and I'm just going to literally lay these on the top and they'll kind of um, sort of melt the flavours into the cauliflower cheese. Okay, so put one there as well. And as I say, these are optional extras. Okay, now then we're going to pop that in the oven and it's going to take probably about, well, it's going to take a good sort of 25 to 30 minutes to cook properly and brown on the top. So just keep an eye on it. If your top is getting too brown, you can just put a piece of baking paper over the top and that will just protect it so it doesn't burn. And just turn the oven down. If you haven't got any baking paper, just turn the oven down to about 160 or maybe pop it on a lower shelf. I always try and cook in the middle of the oven because that's where the heat is at the most even. So I'm going to pop this in the oven and uh, I'll show you the finished result when it's done. All right, hope you managed to follow that okay. Um, I look forward to seeing all of your dishes once they are cooked. I'll put a picture of this at the end of the video and possibly at the start. But you can make any adjustments to this. If you want to use broccoli instead of cauliflower, you can do so. But just be careful because broccoli does actually cook a little bit faster than cauliflower. You can do a mix of the two. So just part bake your cauliflower. And you can put all sorts in here. If you want to do a chilli top, you can put some chilli flakes on there if you like that kind of thing. You can uh, tuck some sun-dried tomatoes in the top in or some olives, make it a bit more Mediterranean. Whatever you fancy, whatever your favourite flavours are. So if you do change the recipe, please email me and let me know how you've changed it and what your thoughts were. And send all your photographs to cookery at fiveacreshighschool.co.uk. Sorry, fiveacreshighschool.co.uk. <laughs> Thank you. I can never remember that email. I'll see you next time.